Today on the newscast, Israel and the U.S. with a combined show of force to Iran. But can Israel count on America if it decides to take action? Find out next. Hey folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to the Watchman Newscast. We've got a very important update today on the wars and rumors of war front regarding Israel and Iran. Now, a potentially significant message, I say potentially, if there is actually teeth behind the U.S. action here. More on that in a minute. But a significant message nonetheless over the weekend on Saturday, two nuclear-capable U.S. B-52 bombers flew over the Middle East from the Eastern Mediterranean to the Persian Gulf and over the Red Sea in what is seen as a show of force to the Iranian regime. Now, these B-52s left a Royal Air Force base in England and they were accompanied, now this is significant, by British warplanes, also Saudi and Kuwaiti warplanes, and yes, at least three Israeli F-35 fighter jets. Now, the U.S. Air Force released a statement about the flyover. They did not mention Israel, which is pretty significant, I think, and not a coincidence, sadly, but Israel not mentioned in this Air Force press release. But Israel did say, yes, we were there, and Israel announced its participation in this flyover. Now, clearly, this flyover comes as tensions are increasing between Iran and the United States, even as... The Biden administration and Europe desperately tried to cobble together and resuscitate that disastrous Iran nuclear deal. They're doing that in spite of Iran firing rockets and drones uh, at U.S. assets and soldiers and bases, despite Iran threatening former Trump administration officials on American soil. The list goes on and on of Iranian provocations against the United States. Nevertheless, the Biden administration remains hell-bent on reviving that deal. Stay tuned on that. We had comments from the EU, the European Union foreign policy chief today, saying, well, things aren't looking so great right now. They were looking good, but now we don't know. Folks, it's been the same story for months, really for years now, since President Trump rightly pulled the United States out of the first incarnation of this deal back in 2018. But again... Western leaders are desperately trying to revive it. And every other week, it seems like their message is, if we don't sign the deal now, this is it. It's our final chance. We heard that a year ago. We heard that a year and a half ago. And yet the talks continue. Folks, the West, mark my words, is not going to walk away from the table. They want a deal seemingly at all cost that includes the Biden administration. And that's why I questioned, questioned at the top, is there teeth? Is there actual bite behind this flyover of the Middle East over the weekend? Certainly a show of force. And by the way, this is the fourth such flyover this year in 2022. So certainly a consistent, a steady show of force from U.S. nuclear-capable B-52 bombers flying over the Middle East, joined by Israeli fighter jets. But is that all it is? Is it just a show, key word there, of force. It's tough to take the Biden administration seriously when they're having the flyover, yet in the same breath, they are negotiating possibly the worst foreign policy disaster in American history. If the U.S. is forging a deal with the Iranian regime, and then Israel decides to take action against Iran's nuclear weapons facilities, is the Biden administration really going to be okay with that? Well, folks, guess what? We may find out sooner rather than later. Yair Lapid, the interim Israeli prime minister today, September 6th, visited an Israeli Air Force base in the south of the country. And he made a statement, uh, not very subtle, standing in front of, a, of an F-35 fighter jet when he made the statement towards Iran. And he said, and I quote, don't test us. We mean business. I'm paraphrasing him now. Don't test us, direct quote, but paraphrasing, he said, look, we mean business and we will do what we need to do to defend the state of Israel. And paramount to defending the state of Israel is 
preventing Iran from acquiring the world's deadliest weapons, which it will use against the Jewish state. Lapid knows this, and Israeli leaders across the political spectrum are aware of what they are facing, whether it's from the center, center left, uh, where Lapid is, to the right, there is consensus among Israeli leaders. Hey, we're not going to allow Iran to get the bomb under any circumstances, nuclear deal or not. Lapid has repeatedly made the point that Israel is not a party. They're not beholden to that nuclear deal. But for the Biden administration to say, hey, we're not going to hamstring Israel or tie their hands or hold them back from acting against Iran, I find that, again, folks, very hard to believe, because if Israel strikes Iran, it will literally blow up that Iran nuclear deal that the Biden administration, Britain, France, Germany, have worked so hard to cobble together. So stay tuned. Lapid is not bluffing, I don't believe. I don't believe any Israeli leader, from Netanyahu previously to Bennett previously to Lapid now, has been bluffing when they have said to Iran, it's not going to happen, absolute red line. We will do what we need to do to prevent you, Iranian regime, from acquiring the bomb and using it against us. Now, two quick points here on the political front. Number one, remember, new Israeli elections will be held on November 1st. Will Benjamin Netanyahu once again be Israel's leader. He's the favorite right now. Again, Lapid is the interim prime minister. Secondly, obviously here in the U.S. on November 8th, midterm elections. Will that affect uh, the Iran issue, the Iran nuclear issue? Say Republicans sweep into Congress, take control of the House. Will that change things? Will that affect the trajectory that Biden is on and trying to appease the Iranian regime? And lastly, keep in mind that a new uh, British prime minister took office today. Liz Truss, that's T-R-U-S-S, becomes the third uh, female British prime minister. Again, took office today, taking the reins from Boris Johnson, who resigned back in July. Where does she stand on all of this? Look, she's been publicly a friend of Israel, had a lot of great things to say about the state of Israel. Where does she stand on the Iran nuclear deal and what will be her posture going forward? Folks, a lot going on in the world's most strategic and volatile region, the Middle East. So join us tomorrow, Wednesday, September 7th, for yet another Watchman Newscast live stream right here on the channel between 4 and 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Bring your questions for a full hour live. We will dig into all of this and we will take your questions. And what are the prophetic implications, by the way? We will drill down on that tomorrow. Don't miss the live stream. Until then, thanks so much for joining us today. God bless you. And remember, never hold your peace. Hey, everyone. Thanks for checking out the Watchman Newscast. If you enjoyed this episode and want to see more, make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, click subscribe, and tap the bell icon to turn on notifications for new Watchman Newscast episodes every weekday.